this average Joe, he meets this woman, she wants him to write a book about her life with the mob, but in this case, he says yes. And then his life goes down the rabbit hole, and it's just crazy from there. So welcome. Um, so I wanted to first just touch base on um, the, the first book um, that Zoe mentioned. So In Our Blood, uh, this was my first book, and I planned to write a, a series with this detective. Um, and I started on the second novel, and I hit a wall. So writer's block, it really is a real thing. Um, just didn't know what to do with the plot. So I, I decided to just put it aside, you know, take a little break from it. and. Then I started thinking, what, what, can I, what can I do next? So I had this idea um, based on something that happened to me in real life. Um, that's where the idea was spawned for this guy walks into a bar. So years ago, when my, when my girls were young, I was asked by a woman to ghostwrite a book for her based on her life with the mob. So I met with her one night. I thought she was crazy, um, didn't believe anything she was telling me. Um, he's a very famous, he was a very famous crime boss, um, not Whitey Bulger. Um, and as we got to talking, I, I asked her, why, why, did, why do you want me to write this for you? She said, I have to tell my story, but I can't write. So I need somebody to tell my story. Um, I got a little bit nervous at first thinking, Maybe she is the real deal, but I still was skeptical, and I, I think she could sense that. So she started pulling out photos, and I looked at a photo, and there she was with her arm around him. So that's when I realized she, she's really the real deal. Um, a little crazy, though. Um, so we, we talked for probably a couple of hours. Um, she filled me in a lot on, on some of her experiences with the mob, which was scary and sad, but at the same time, it was intriguing. Um, but I started to get really worried, so I, I told her I would get back to her, and then of course I went home and my wife said, are you insane? There's no way you're going to get involved in this. I met with the woman again, and I, and I told her I just couldn't do it. I, I made up a story, I said, I just don't have time. And she got very angry to the point where it, she was making a scene in the place. Um, but I just didn't feel comfortable. so. I ended up not doing it, but over the years, I just, I always wondered, what if I had said yes? Um, could have become a bestseller? I could have ended up with concrete shoes, who knows? So um, when I was trying to think of an idea, I, I thought, well, well, what if I had said yes? So that's the premise of this, is this average Joe, he meets this woman, she wants him to write a book about her life with the mob, but in this case, he says yes. And then his life goes down the rabbit hole. And it's just crazy from there. So um, that, that's, that's where um, I got the idea for that. Um, the, the, the sequel to this, I'm, I'm back to writing it now. Um, I finally got over my hump of, of not knowing where to take the plot because this, this, is more of an, uh, this one's more of an action thriller, whereas this is more of a mystery thriller. So both of them have plot twists, but this one was definitely more intricate, the plotting which is the same, same case with the one I'm working in now. And I just struggled for quite a bit um, with how to work out. Like, I, I knew the beginning, I knew the ending, just didn't know how to tie it all together. Finally worked that out. So now I'm cranking out that, hope, hoping to have that done by, I'm hoping in the, the fall. That's my plan. Um, so look for that book. I recently, as I was writing this, I tried to find, I had all her information, but I lost it. So I was Googling her up, trying to find her, and I can find no trace of her. So I don't know if she's even alive, uh, because she had a very difficult life. I did ask her when we were talking if she knew Whitey Bulger, and she did. She, she had met him, and I said, do you know where he is, because he was missing then. Oh, yeah. And she said, of course I don't. Nobody knows where he is. But she, it was, it was a kind of a, a crazy conversation. We, we probably sat for, I want to say, close to three hours. And she filled me in on, I mean, I, I, began, I began asking her questions like, have you ever seen anyone killed? Because I just became so intrigued. 
And, and she would say yes, but so, so lackadaisically, like, oh yeah, like, it was, no, it was like it was just part of her life. It was no big deal to her. She had a rough life. She was showing me photos of her, her friends and they were either all dead or in prison. So it, it was really, it was eye-opening, but, and, I, and as intrigued as I was, I just got more and more nervous as the conversation went on. Um, and that's why I bailed on it. Um, but yeah, I, I'm very, really curious to see where she is now. I have no idea what happened to her. Is it easier to continue writing with the same series with the same characters or writing with a, a totally new story with new characters? Um, typically, I would probably say it's easier with the characters you know, but in this particular case, I found this to be so easy to write. Um, it, it kind of just flowed. Um, I wrote the entire thing uh, from beginning to um, edited stage within six months. Um, whereas this first one took me a couple of years. Um, and I think it's just because I, I had in my head what, what I, I, I knew how it would begin, how it would end. I didn't really know what was going to happen in between, but as I, as I started writing, I know it sounds weird, but the characters kind of speak to me. So I might sit down and have no idea what's happening next, and then it just kind of comes out. Um, and it just, and it, that's, that's how it went with this book. It just flowed so, so easily. Um, but th not so much with the Jay Coxworth, uh, series. Um, I, I'm finding with the, new, with the second in the series with him that it's easier now with the characters because I know them. Um, and I've gotten feedback from people who have read the first book, you know, people who know, um, you know, they, they give me their, their thoughts on this character or this character. So then it helps me as I'm writing the next book to see where I want to take that character based on feedback I've heard from people. Um, but I find the, the mystery aspect is a little more, hello, welcome, uh, is a little more um, challenging because I always like to go for that big twist. Um, and I do have, I mean, it has several twists in it, but you know, it's like, you just, you, you need to make sure it works and, and you need to make sure that it, you're not cheating the audience. You know, um, I've read many mystery books where the, the twist is so far-fetched that, you know, you kind of roll your eyes and say, well, that, that's crazy. So, so I, I try to be really honest with my characters and the way they behave. Do I have to do any research as far as like uh, police law, that type of thing? Um, Yes, I did. Um, for the first book, I did a lot of research um, on talk, talk to some police officers, different people in uh, actually talked to somebody in um, in the medical field, uh, forensics, just to make sure I got the the in, info right. Like, for example, if, if you know, if you're you have a scene with a coroner and it doesn't ring true, you know, people just aren't going to believe it. So um, it, the second book, it was a little easier, the research, because I didn't have as much involved with with the poli pr police procedural and medical aspect as I did in the first one. Um, so I didn't have to do quite as much research on that one. Um, the one I'm writing now though, um, it's actually called Phobia and it's so it, it does play into people's fears and phobias and so I've had to do a lot of research on that. So at the time I was working as a copywriter and my boss at the time she had been contacted by her, but she didn't, she didn't write um, fiction. And she knew I was interested in writing a novel. So she, she said, hey, would you like to go meet with her? Well, after I met with her, I went into the office on Monday and I said, are you trying to get me killed? <laughs> she had no idea what this woman was like, or she, she didn't even know what the project was about. So that, that, was, that was interesting, but uh, she meant well, but when I write characters, are they based on people I know? Um, definitely, I take, I usually take little bits of pieces from different people. So, Jay Coxworth, the main character in this book, um, he's, he's really formed from about four different people, different characteristics of four people in my life. Um, same with, uh, this guy walks into a bar, so this, this uh, main character, there, there are aspects, I think, that actually play back to me, but also to friends and family. Um, there's a brother in this. I had a brother. Um, 
the relationship wasn't the same as in the book, but I kind of took that as a starting point and then, um, you know, changed it up to, to fit the story. Um, but yeah, I definitely, uh, even, the, even the descriptions of them, I picture in my head what they'll look like and, you know, I, I take little bits of, you know, you and you and, um, and put them together. Um, with this guy walks into a bar though, my memory of this woman, the crazy woman, was so memorable. Like I, I can still picture exactly what she looked like, her mannerisms. So I wrote that as true as I could in here. Um, I remember she sat there smoking a cigarette. That was when you could actually smoke in places. Um, and she blew smoke in my face for two hours. Um, <laughs> but I just remember, I remember everything right down to her. She had, I remember she had these perfect nails and perfect teeth, but the rest of her, she looked so just worn, like, like she had been through you know, such a tough life. But I remember thinking, for someone who's been through so much, she had these amazing nails and these amazing teeth. So I, I always remembered that. But I remembered her mannerisms, her voice. Um, so that, that's, that's what I drew, drew upon for her, this, that character in this. When I walked in to meet her, did I, did I um, expect her to be look like a stereotypical mob, mob woman? Um, I didn't know going into it what I, I had no idea what she was even meeting me about. All I knew was she wanted me to ghostwrite something. Um, I didn't even know if it was a novel or just if she wanted me to ghostwrite an article. And I needed the money, so I thought, sure, I'll go in and get, grab a quick buck. But I had no idea what the project was until she started talking. Um, and then, you know, and then it became a little bit weird. Um, and, and it was funny because, and, and I actually bring, I, I actually play it out in the book because I remember distinctly, she did not believe, I mean, she thought I didn't believe her, which I didn't. Was it going to be a memoir? Yeah, I think that's what her intention was because she said she just had to get her story out. Matter of fact, I think that's the first line and let me just look, I, I think that's, sorry. I think that's the first line in my book. Um, See what, yeah, this is, this is, I think this is pretty close to what she actually said. The story eating at my insides has to be told before it kills me. So, I mean, I paraphrase that, but it was something along those lines. She just was so determined to have this written. Um, and that's why when I turned her down, she became so angry because she, at first she said, I can pay you. And I said, it's not about the money. And she just really wanted this told. Um, yeah, so it was, uh, it was, it was a very uncomfortable second meeting with her um, because she was not happy. And then I went home thinking, she knows where I live. So not, that's not good. She actually gave me her, her real name. Um, she, she even gave me her phone number. Um, at the time, she, she didn't give me any, any kind of email address, but just her name and phone number. Um, and that's how I met with her the second time because she had given me her, her number, called her back. That was... We met in the same place, but this time she thought I was meeting to accept the deal and yeah. It, and, and I had saved it and I, I, I tore my house apart trying to find it and I lost it probably in one of my moves. But um, I wish I still had the information just to, just to try to find what happened to her. I would guess she was probably in her early 40s, but she looked like she was probably in her 60s just because she had, you could just see she had had such a rough life. Um, so I guess, I'm guessing she'd probably be somewhere in the, she'd probably be in her 60s now maybe, um, if, she's still, if she's still alive. When I met with her, she was living in Boston. She had been in New York. Um, that's where she actually first met him, was in New York. Um, and then she left, at some point she left him, I don't know, if it was by her choice or his choice, but she then was living in Boston at the time. And I think that's where she met Whitey Bulger, actually. How did I get into writing um, mystery novels? Um, yeah, I've always loved mysteries and suspense since I was young, um, whether it be movies, books. Um, and so I, I always in my head wanted to write like a great thriller. Um, always had ideas going through my head. I mean. Even now, every night, I lay in bed and I, new ideas pop up. So too, too many ideas, which is not good. What's the writing process? Um, how, do I, how do I start, um, whether I you know, take notes, that type of thing? So 
I am not the type to outline a book. I know a lot of, a lot of writers I know, they have to outline everything um, before they can even write it. They, they will put together a, a rough draft, outline it. Some even put stickies on their wall, um, move things around. I can't write like that. Um, I tried and it just wasn't working. So what I do is I just, I get the initial idea. I usually know the beginning and the end, um, both of these books and actually the, the one I'm working on now, I know how that ends, um, but I don't know a lot of what's happening in between. But what I do is I, so I, I know how it starts, I know how it ends, and then I have to try to connect all that together. And I just, I, just, um, I just sit down and some days it doesn't come. I might sit there and look at a blank screen for two hours or other times it just comes. And I, I, just, I just let it flow. It's more of a free flowing process. Um, yeah, that's the best way to describe it. Just, I need, I need total silence when I write. I can't have distractions. I can't have music in the background. Um, can't have people in the background. And it just kind of, um, I, I know it sounds weird, but they, they talk to me. It's, I know it sounds creepy, but when I read a mystery, um, do I figure it out? Do I figure out the, and I usually do. Um, my favorite book um, is Presumed Innocent, which actually is now a, a series on Peacock with, Jake Gyllenhaal, but I read this like way back in the, I think it was in the 80s maybe or 90s, and I thought that was one of the best twists I'd ever seen in a, a, a book because I didn't, I didn't catch the twist until close to the end of the book, and then something hit me and I, and I got it, and I was so proud of myself that I figured it out, but there have been so, uh, several books, um, Dennis Lehane is my favorite author, I don't know if any of you read Dennis Lehane, but um, Shutter Island, if anyone's read that. That one totally got me off guard. I had no idea. I, it, it was to the point where when I hit a certain point in the book, I had to actually flip back because I, I said, what? What just happened? And I had to go back and, and see if what I was reading was, was true. But, but usually I figure it out. Um, I, get, I, get, I get excited trying to figure these things out. Like even if I'm watching a movie, you know, a mystery movie as well, or a series. Do I have an English major? Um, no, I actually had a communications major. So the funny thing is I started out at working as an art director. Um, so I was designing things, but as I was designing, I would sometimes write copy with my designs and I would piss off the, the copywriters. They weren't too happy about it. But once in a while they'd say, well, that's pretty good, we'll keep it, but don't do it again. So, and then as time went by, I, I just started getting more of a love for, for that end of the, the business. And um, I finally met with, with somebody, he was kind of a mentor, and he said, you need to pick one. Today, you're either a writer or you're a designer, you can't be both. And I said, I'm a writer. And he said, from, there, from that point out, you're now a writer, and that's, from then on, I've I've done nothing but writing in my career. Would I ever try genres other than mystery? Um, hmm, good question. I did write a children's book way back in the day um, when my daughters were little. Um, I, I never did anything with it. So for a while, I, I kind of thought I could write a children's story. But, um, but then, I don't know, I, I think, I, I guess I would consider maybe like historic fiction, because I do like historic fiction. Um, Ken Follett is one of my favorite authors. I don't know if anyone has read him, but um, I do tend to like that. I know it would involve a lot more research, so I'd be a little bit skeptical, but, um, but yeah, I, I, would, I would consider it. Uh, no romance, but. <laughs> Did I do research um, on writing, writing, through writing books on how to structure a book, how to plot a book? I bought a ton of books on that subject. Um, I didn't find them all that helpful, um, but I did read about them, and, and, and I, I, I guess I got some good tidbits from it. Um, one book, though, that I actually got, um, really got some inspiration from was Stephen King's On Writing. It's, it's, it's a book where he, he wrote about the writing process, and that was actually when I was in my slump where I had a writer's block. I, I just... I didn't know what to do with it, and I read his book, and it was just really inspiring. It, it, it helped me to, to you know, figure, figure that out a little bit more and understand why. So um, that's something, and I, I still have the book. I'll, sometimes I'll, I'll refer back to it, you know, just flip through it. 
Um, but yeah, I've, 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 I've probably spent too much money on some of those books. I love true crime. Uh, matter of fact, I've been watching court TV a lot. Um, so I do, I do get really excited and I, I actually, I, I am still hoping one day I'll get picked to be on a jury. I've never been on a jury, but I'd love to sit on one. But um, I, don't, I don't know if I'd write true, true crime. Um, I mean, I guess if someone approached me about it, I would. Um, like the Karen Reed case, if somebody wants me to write about it, I'll, I'll take it on. But I haven't thought about it, writing true, true crime. But I, but I love reading true crime. I know the beginning and the end, but does the ending change sometimes once I figure out the middle? Yes. Um, with In Our Blood, it didn't. Um, because I had it kind of in my head, the stages of the book, so I, I knew that ending was going to work. But with This Guy Walks Into a Bar, I changed the ending. I, it, it, the ending I originally planned just wasn't working as I went through and as the characters developed. So, yeah, the ending changed quite a bit in that one. And, I, and I'm, I'm pretty happy with the, the change in the ending. So. Matter of fact, I have a, a funny story about um, when I was writing In Our Blood. So I, I always pick um, my beta readers, you know, people who I'll ask to read, and, but, I, but I only pick people who I know will give me honest opinions because I don't want somebody to just say, oh, it's great, I love it. Um, so it's one friend of mine. She is as brutally honest as, as you can be. So when she read the prologue to In Our Blood, the initial prologue, she said, I hated it so much I almost threw the book across the room. She said, but then I continued reading and loved the rest. So, but I, at first I thought, well, what does she know? You know? But then I thought about it, and she was right. It, it just it didn't work, so I, I ended up, as, as painful as it was, I trashed the whole beginning of the book and rewrote it, and it, it turned out to be a much, a much better choice. So she, she was really right in saying that. So I, I do, when I, when, I, when I have readers, I do listen to their feedback. Um, you know, I don't always take all their advice. Um, it's, you know, some, some is, uh, you know, subjective, but I do listen if somebody tells me the character that character doesn't ring true you know he wouldn't really speak like that he wouldn't act like that um i i do take that into account have i ever met dennis lehane no but i would love to have a beer with him um and i know years ago he when he was, when he was first getting big he spoke at the duxbury public library and i remember seeing it advertised and i wanted to go and i couldn't um, I did ask them recently because I, I just did something with them and I said, are you getting Dennis Lehane back? And they said, we've, we've reached out to his people. They, they haven't responded. So I think he's too big now. But yeah, I, I just, I love, um, even if I don't love his books, I love his writing. So I, I tend to buy every book he writes. A um, couple of his books, I haven't loved the book, but I just love his writing style. Um, so there are certain authors that I just, yeah, you know, I, will, I will buy their book just for that. When an editor makes suggestions, how do I, how do I respond to that and how do I take that? Um, the, the good thing for me is I actually work as an editor by trade. So by day, I am an editor, a writer-editor. So I feel so comfortable with my own editing that I don't even feel like I need an editor. However, um, with, with my first book, that was self-published, I didn't use an editor. Um, it was just me and my readers um, you know, who gave me their input. But on the second book, I did, that was pu published through a, a publisher. And they, so they did assign me an editor. Um, I, I took some of their advice, but a lot of it I didn't agree with. And I, I did push back on, on um, a lot of their comments. I, uh, a lot of it had to do with um, dialogue around the characters. And I just, it, I said, this is just not, who this character is. This character would not behave that way. Uh, didn't, they didn't really have any issues with anything plot-wise. It was more the way the characters were talking. But I just, I just didn't, it didn't ring true with me. And that's something that I, I always try to make sure the di if the dialogue doesn't ring true, you're not gonna buy the story. Do I have the final say um, over the editor? I, I actually found, because it was a small publisher, I did. If it was a big publisher, I probably wouldn't have had as much say probably would have had to just do whatever they tell me to do. If they said change his name, I probably would have had to. Um, but because it was a small publisher, they were pretty flexible with me, um, even with the cover. So when, when the cover was being designed, originally 
the, um, the designer had, there's a small bullet hole in the back, but originally she had put bullet holes on the front and I just, I didn't feel comfortable because we had just had, recently had a mass shooting at that time, um, I think a school shooting. And so I felt really uncomfortable with that. So I did tell them, you know, I don't, I don't want that, you know, I, I don't want that to be the center of it. Um, so they, they just, you know, they just put a very subtle one in the back, which I thought was a nice touch. Um, but, but they were really open to that. Um, this, this cover, I went back and forth a lot because I knew I, knew I wanted the, the title to look like, like a neon sign. You know, when you, you think of Sleazy Bar with the beer sign, I wanted that look and she just couldn't get it right. It took her probably 10 times. Uh, finally, she, she got it. So, um, and originally the cover was red and not purple. So it was like a bright red. It was a cool, it was cool but um, she decided to switch it to purple, which I wasn't happy about at first. Um, and I did push back on that, but in the end, I, I, I think the more I thought about it, the purple just felt more ominous to me than the red. The red, the red I think, would stand out more on a bookshelf. But, um, and then with, with this book, um, the designer I used for that, there's, a, there's blood here, you can see blood, but it's not a horror novel. And the way it was designed, they had blood dripping down the entire book. And I said, I said, this is not a horror novel. That's what people are going to think. So they scaled it back. I, in hindsight, I wish they had scaled it back a little bit more because I still felt like there was almost too much because it's, it's, it's a crime mystery. It's, it's, not a, you know, it's not a horror novel. But, but over, overall, I was pleased with, with the end result. Um, do I have ideas for the next cover for the, the, the sequel I'm working on? I actually drafted up a, I, I, I don't have it with me. I, um, I have a, a mock-up of a cover um, for Phobia, which I wish I had it with me. I would have shown you. But yeah, so I did, it's, it's, just a, a, it's just a rough rendering, but it's, it's something that I can give you know, a designer to say, this is kind of the look I want. And then, of course, they would, you know, they would take it and do their thing with it. But um, I did the same with, with both of these. I, I did give them like a rough, a rough uh, idea and actually one of my daughters is really good with that stuff so she actually helped me come up with that mock-up for, for phobia um, so when it's time for um, for that I will I will give them you know that copy to look at am I going to use the same publisher uh, for the next book that I used on this guy walks into a bar and the question is no because they were a really small publisher and they can only do so much if they're a small publisher. So while they paid for all the, you know, the cost of the production of the book and all that, I had to basically do all my own marketing, which is a lot of work, um, and it's not cheap. So I'm really looking for a bigger publisher this time around, you know, someone who can take on the, the marketing aspect of it, um, and hopefully I can get a Netflix deal. So um, <laughs> my dream. But um, yeah, I definitely am looking for, matter of fact, I hadn't, there was an agent who almost represented me on that, that book. In the end, he, 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 he was back and forth and then he ended up not representing me. But I think when this new book's done, he's the first one I'm going to reach out to because I think this is in his wheelhouse, this new one. So I, I think it would be just knowing what, what his tastes are. So I, I think he could be interested and he, he works with a lot of big publishers. So. That's, I'm kind of hoping to go that route if I can get an agent who can you know, connect me with a big publisher. How do I identify that it's a series um, on the cover? So on this book, it just says A.J. Coxworth Thriller. Um, the plan was on the second one to also say that. Um, I, I, I guess that's something I should think about. But I definitely would keep the the name Jay Coxworth on the cover. If I get a new publisher for the third book, would they take on the first two? Um, this, this book, they wouldn't because it's already through a publisher. Potentially, because this is self-published, they could. Um, and where it's part of a series, that, I, I could see that possibly happening. And if, if they did, they'd probably redesign the cover because whatever they you know, would do on the next one, I'm sure they'd want that symmetry. Um, and you know, like you were just saying about the, you know, the book one and book two. So, so I think if that if that does happen, then I would expect that they would probably redo the cover on that. Is this guy walked into a bar um, more mafia focused? Yes. So that they're they're both very different. Um, 
they're both really fast reads, um, but this guy walks into a bar I think is a quicker read. It's just really, once it gets going, it's like nonstop. Um, but it has some cool twists in it. But it's definitely more just action, action, action um, uh, thriller. Whereas this is, this one involves a little bit more of a mystery, like trying to figure things out more. Um, I mean, I guess this one does too, but I, I see this more as a detective procedural mystery, whereas this is more of a, you know, more of a straight action. Like, more like some people have said, you know, they think of Jason Bourne, that kind of thing. He, he's like an everyman, but he, ha you know, he has to kind of step up and become this, you know, Superman kind of thing, even though he's not. If Netflix or some other streaming service approached me, um, would I want them be, to be made into a movie or a series? Is that the qu that's the question, right? Yeah. So I think I think with this guy walks into a bar, I see that as a movie, like a two-hour film. I see In Our Blood as a series because it's so intricate that I th I could see that becoming like a you know ten episode type series, and that's where and 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 I think you get to know the character a lot more because um, Jake's kind of a complicated character. So you know, really, I I'd love to see you know. I, I mean, when I think about who I'd want to play him, I always thought of James Gandolfini. Of course, that wouldn't happen now, but um, I used to think that when, when uh, I first was writing this. But yeah, I, I, I have in my head um, different characters. Like, as I'm writing even, I think, oh, what actor could play this? What actress could play that? Um, so if that ever happens, then, I mean, they can do whatever they want. If Netflix approaches me, they can do anything they want with it. Do I read Michael Connolly and have I seen Bosch? Yep, I've read a bunch of Michael Connolly's books and I have watched the whole series. Love it. Who would I cast as Patty um, if, 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 it were, if it were made into a, a film? Um, I can't think of her name, but, um, well, actually, one, one I've been told by some people is Juliette Lewis. Um, and then there's an actress who I don't know her name, but she was in the movie The Fighter with Mark Wahlberg. She played the mom. Did anyone remember that? Some, yeah, something like that. She had that roughness and that, that rough, scratchy voice because this, this woman had such a raspy, such a raspy voice, like ah, that kind of a, that's how she spoke. And, and, just, and she, had, she, was, she was tiny. She was actually very small, but she just had a toughness about her. So, yeah, it's a good question. All right, well... Um, I will be signing copies if anyone wants to get a copy. Mm -hmm.